Welcome to Nostalgia, your favorite pop culture podcast where we have deep conversations about superficial things. I'm Nicole, your host, and each week we unlock core memories from the 90s, 2000s, and beyond while examining the past through a contemporary lens. Our guests are pop culture tastemakers who explore how our formative experiences shape how we see the world. We talk about trends, fashion, music, identity, consumer behavior, societal attitudes, and more. Nostalgia is a reminder of how our individual and collective memories make us feel like we belong and if you like nostalgia be sure to follow subscribe rate review and share with a friend who loves pop culture as much as we do plus we have a lot of fun enjoy the show Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Nostalgia. I'm very excited because I have someone very nostalgic here with me today, half in part because her name is Nicole too. So immediately, immediately yes from me. Nicole is a content creator. You might know her as Miss 2005. And honestly, I'm a huge fan. I am instantly transported back to 2005. So welcome, Nicole. Thanks for being here. Oh my God, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. You are so, so, so sweet. That was the nicest introduction I think I've ever gotten in my whole entire life. And we're literally twin flames. Are you kidding? Seriously, we really are. And I am a huge fan of retro tech. I... I work in the tech space, so I love emerging tech and the future and everything and how that relates to pop culture and entertainment, but I really love retro tech too. And so this is where you come in. You have a lot of these physical media items. And so So I wanted to just hear about your collection and kind of like how it came to be because I got rid of everything and I'm kicking myself for it. Oh my gosh, you have to get everything back. I'm telling you, everything that you had back then, I'm telling you, is on eBay or Mercari. And that's where I get, actually, all of my stuff. Um, I think some people online think that all of my retro tech is mine from the early 2000s. But the reality of that is, I was like five or four in 2005. So I wasn't walking around with a Motorola razor. I didn't have an Nextel. I didn't have an iPod. I had the Disney TV, but that's pretty much it. So not even with retro tech, just like everything in general, I feel like I missed out on so much in the early 2000s because I was so young. And that's where I have it all now. It's like I'm experiencing the Motorola razor for the first time, and I've never been happier. I would trade my iPhone in for one any day of the week, I swear. Yeah, my first cell phone I had in 2004, it was a Virgin Mobile little phone and it was pay as you go before they even had like cell phone plans or whatever. They probably did. But the point is that I found one on Etsy for $30 and I'm like, I might. Yeah. Oh, now you just opened up a whole new world for me. I've never thought about going on Etsy for anything. Etsy has a lot of random stuff and sometimes I will post a screenshot of the emails that Mercari sends me saying, you left this in your cart. It's a limited to shower radio. It's a Lizzie McGuire, Hillary Duff graphic tee. It's all the most ridiculous things. And I'm like, yes, I was just browsing that for the yeah, last actually, 20 minutes. Buy that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you need an Etsy brand deal. We need a sponsorship on here. Mm. Oh, we need to get Etsy on the phone. We need to get them on the phone immediately. Yeah, (laughs) even just seeing what are you thinking about all of the different kind of nostalgic collaborations? Because speaking of collabs, I saw that you had posted about the new Juicy Couture and Craft Mayo, which is such a funny partnership. I love it. So, so, so insane. It's like the most random, obscure collab you could ever think of. But it was so perfect. I had so much fun doing that. That was like my dream brand deal because I love Juicy Couture. And just there's so many like early 2000s collabs coming out. Like they released, um, they released a new Motorola Razor, I believe. It's like a smartphone, Mm -hmm. but it like flips. I need to get my hands on that. I I need to get Motorola on the phone too. I know. I I saw a commercial and I'm like, I need a flip phone again immediately. Like, should we get matching Motorola Razors? Yes, 100%. And it's just be so dazzle the whole thing. Oh, we have to do it. I want, um, the next thing I need for my collection is the LG Shine 
phone. It looks like a mirror Mm -hmm. and Lauren Conrad promoted it. I need it. That's going to be like for my 2007 era. My sister had one and I think it's in the house somewhere. So I need to find it. Oh, we're going to match. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're going to match. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. I think something, too, that people talk about a lot with, especially with millennials, it's like the first time seeing the trend cycle complete, yeah. you know, in that 20 year span. And so a concern by millennials is like, oh, well, you know, I see Gen Z going, mm-hmm. you know, about with um, 2000s trends and it's not authentic or this or that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, they weren't there. So how would it be authentic if there's not a firsthand experience? Exactly. You can you can recreate something. And mm-hmm. I've seen people kind of talk about being able to cherry pick trends or this or that or only take the things they like from the past and leave the rest. Mm-hmm. But like, that's what people do. That That's kind of part of it. It's that reinvention. And it's we're not living in the 2000s again. Yeah. Everything, whether it was from the 70s to the 90s or the I 2000s to now, right? It's like the sociopolitical atmosphere, the evolution of technology. Yeah. Everything is completely different. And what I like looking is how these little cherry pick trends and pieces come together yeah. to represent a new cultural zeitgeist because life in the 2000s is different than life today. So I mm. want to know from you because you do depict mm. what even millennials, I think maybe millennials would think you were a millennial too because of how accurate you portray it, but you are Gen Z. So I want to know where you get your inspiration to portray maybe a more accurate picture than what people usually see on TikTok or on social. That was just the best explanation ever that you just gave because I see that firsthand every single day. And sometimes when people find out that like I'm on the younger side of the nostalgia community, they're like, wait, they're like, do you even remember 2005? And it does hurt my feelings a little bit because, yeah, I do remember 2005, but I perceived it in a different way. I saw things through a five-year-old's eyes. So when I recreate these trends and stuff, it's things that I saw my older brother's friends wearing. It's just like I had always dreamed about being these girls that I saw hanging out with my brothers. And I think that's part of what makes it accurate because I'm pulling from what I remember seeing. I'm not really into like the... uh like the Dolls Kill version of early 2000s. I really do like the authentic way that it was portrayed. And sometimes I do think that I am a little silly with it. I make it a little bit Disney Channel-esque, but I was watching Disney Channel back then. And like you said, millennials seeing these trends recycled. I was wearing an Ed Hardy top the other day and my brother was like, what is going on? He was like, <laughs> actually, what's happening? So it makes me so happy that you think I'm doing it authentically because that's genuinely what I always try to do. It's like almost fantasy fulfillment for me because I'm making what I wanted when I was five years old and making it come true. That's all I ever wanted. That's literally all I've ever wanted was to wear juicy tracksuits. That's it. So you are the youngest child in your family. And I definitely think that has a big impact when you're growing up birth order within your family. So for example, I was born in the early nineties and so was my younger sister. And so she was into brats where I was still more into Barbies and even like Polly pocket toys. There was a different version that came out in the nineties versus the early two thousands. So even being three years apart, you can kind of see some of those differences, even the TV shows that we used to watch. And so I think having much older siblings too, it contributes to how you see the world and Mm -hmm. you, you know, it makes it a little bit more relatable to you than if you were born in the 2000s and had siblings born in the 2000s also. Yeah. And also when you're like the youngest child, I think you always want to do what your older siblings are doing. You always want to copy them. You always want to be a part of what they're doing. So I remember being so young and like the first movie I ever remember watching is Euro Trip, which <laughs> is so inappropriate for a first grader to watch. And I remember being on the playground singing Scotty Doesn't Know. I don't know if you know the movie. Oh yeah. my gosh. I just, from the beginning, I was just always into such like what was going on with like the older demographic. Like when I should have been watching Barney, I was watching John Tucker Must Die. 
It just yeah. explains a lot about who I am now. <laughs> John Tucker Must Die, I first watched that movie a few months ago. And no. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's my favorite ever. Next to a Cinderella story, of course. I love that movie. Yeah, I would say it was good. I'm trying to remember any particular scenes that I loved, but I just remember, the thing I remember the most is that at the time, the soundtrack came out and the band Quiet Drive did a cover of Cyndi Lauper's Time After Time. And yes. it's, it's, that is my favorite version of that song, hands down. Oh, I have the CD, literally in front of me. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I love that. You know what? I actually had a Cinderella story soundtrack and I lost the CD and it was oh. like, life ending I could have literally just gone to the well I guess I couldn't because I was too young to go to the store by myself and buy another one <laughs> but why didn't I just I when I turned I guess by the time I got my license mm -hmm. that was when you could download music off the internet yeah. so I didn't buy the CD again but I remember that's like you a know, the year yeah it's a crisis the year two <laughs> between me losing my Cinderella story soundtrack and me getting my license how was I supposed to listen to that soundtrack? What a year for you. I know. Those are two monumental tough. events. Do you want a Cinderella story CD? Because I have like five. Oh my God, seriously? I'm being so straight up. I would love to send you one. Oh my God, thank you. Not I would love it. that. Oh, it's happening. I, I had a pair of, it kind of looks like she's wearing like not ballerina pink, but I had the like fluorescent pink high top converse. I, they're actually still in the basement. That's one thing that I kept because I'm like, oh, you need to bring them back out. I'm like, these are so cool. You have to bring them back out. Yeah. <laughs> so Cinderella story. Okay. Yes, it stars Hilary Duff, who I absolutely love. I saw her walking down the street once. Did you York. die? I wanted to act cool about it. I just tried to be another pedestrian walking by. But inside, I was kind of dying a little bit. I'm like, do you have any idea how not not important you are as like a celebrity, but like how the impact that people have and these things that you grow up with. And I always say how this podcast isn't about celebrities themselves. It's not about movies. It's not about TV shows. It's about us. It's about you. It's about how these things had a huge, huge impact. Huge. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Was she filming the Lizzie McGuire reboot when you saw her? Um, this was during the younger oh, era. And so it might have been a, it might have been a little <laughs> before that. I do think we were robbed of a Lizzie McGuire reboot. Oh, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> I literally have a breakdown. Are you kidding? I was going to say, speaking of impact, if you witnessed that being filmed, how do you come back from that? How do you recover? How do you continue walking down the street? You just saw Lizzie McGuire. I would still be thinking about it. And I actually love the kind of viral clip that has circulated across the internet of Jake Thomas at the Osmosis Jones premiere where he's oh, like, cracking up. I'm just looking forward to cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> like me too, Jake Thomas, me too. Jake Thomas, first and last name. He has one of those names. You have to say the whole thing. You should use that audio on TikTok. Mm. Like I now. really, sh I really should. And <laughs> right. It's like, if I said Jake, you'd be like, Hmm. Okay. But Jake Thomas, you're like, ah, oh my God. <laughs> Lizzie yeah, McGuire. Like, I'm Michael Murray. Like you don't say Chad, you say Chad Michael Murray. I would ne it's weird to think that his name is Chad when in yeah. fact it's Chad Michael Murray. I know. Can you imagine calling him Chad? No. He's your number one guy. Oh yeah. I feel like Chad Michael Murray is gonna be so silly. I feel like Chad Michael Murray is like the one constant in my life. Like mm. I watched him when I was so young and I still watch him now. I watched a Cinderella story when I was little. I discovered One Tree Hill when I was a teenager. I feel like his work has impacted me so much. And people think I just like him because he's very attractive. And that's just like the smallest part of it. I feel like his work has just gotten me through so much, especially One Tree Hill. I know you haven't seen it, but we're gonna get you to watch it. I feel like that is like my biggest form of escapism. And Chad's like the biggest part of that. He's also a part of everything that I love, like every movie, every TV show. 
So yeah, he's just my favorite guy. You can tell. I like him a little bit. <laughs> What's the... Okay, so <laughs> how would you describe One Tree Hill to someone like me who has never seen it before? Life-altering. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, when you first watch it, you're like, oh, it's a show about basketball. But then... But then you get into it and it's like, I will never see the world the same way again. It introduces you to so much literature, so much music. The life lessons like actually stay with you. And I think, I think it's important for like any age, any age group. I think you can always take away something from it. But watching that specifically as a teenager, that like, I needed it. Like it changed my life. That was like my Bible. Mm hmm. Ugh. So would you say that there's more of a focus on the sports like a Friday Night Lights or is it more about a teen drama like the interpersonal relationships? I think or it's both. both. I think it's both. You know what? I've never gotten into Friday Night Lights because every time I try to watch it, I'm like, wow, I wish I was watching One Tree Hill right now because I like One Tree Hill made me love basketball. And that's just so off brand for me. <laughs> <laughs> that is just so out of character. And now I'm like out here watching like March Madness games. And I'm like, what did this show do to me? So maybe mm -hmm. if I watched Friday Night Lights, I'd get into football. Who knows? That is that is inspiring. <laughs> I love that. Um, speaking of inspiring, your outfit. We have to talk about it. Oh my it. god, let's actually talk about it. I wore it just for you. Thank you. Okay, if anyone is listening as opposed to watching, we have a beautiful lace cami. We have the long dark hair. We have the Playboy crystal encrusted necklace. We have the French Manny. Like it all came together for Nick. <laughs> this is very nostalgic of you. This is literally just how I am. They're like, so many people are like, do you dress like that in real life? And I'm like, like what? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is literally just how I dress. I love it. Yeah, I used to work at companies where the clothes were very fashion forward, but very dressy. And so I would wear clothes that people would probably wear to like a wedding or a bridal shower, just oh, on I a daily it. basis, walking down the stairs of the subway in platform <laughs> shoes, like in a giant billowing maxi That's dress. Carrie Bradshaw. It, truly. And I'm like, this is just the way that I am. <laughs> as you should, you showed mm -hmm. up and you showed out and you showed off as you should. Mm -hmm. You're Thank gorgeous. you. Right. Thank you. I'm thinking of now because the winter is coming. I'm thinking of ironically wearing Ugg boots because I never had a pair myself, but my sister did and I would steal them from her. And so now it's like, do I think Uggs are the pinnacle of fashion in 2022? Maybe not, but I'd say yeah. Would I would I ironically wear them because <laughs> they're too, they just remind me of two thousands trash in a good way. Going to the gas station and Not going to Target and and getting a honestly going to Target and getting Starbucks is the twenty twenty two equivalent of going to the gas station in the two thousands. I feel like I love that. I love that so much. I like, I go to the mall and I get like a frappuccino and I'm like, it's literally 2007 right now. Like nobody could tell me differently. You need to wear Uggs. Oh, 100%. That's the well, aesthetic for this fall. The um, mall, <laughs> the mall that I, or the mall activity that I love is getting pretzel time or now Ooh. it's called pretzel maker, but it used to be called pretzel time. And you know, similar to Auntie Anne's and you just go, sometimes me and my sister will go to the mall and before we leave, we'll be like, Pretzel time? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Ugh, going to the mall is just such like an experience. It's so fun. Anyone who doesn't like the mall, I just don't trust them. I don't trust them. Yeah, I think there's definitely been kind of a renaissance because we had the retail kind of apocalypse of the early 2010s and with mm -hmm. the advent of online shopping and omni-channel retail which is when and i worked in retail at this time too so it was cool to kind you of see this house, i worked at gilly hicks that I was my it. first retail job and yeah. i read a statistic the other day that said that 2022 is the first year in 10 years that abercrombie opened more stores than it closed 
And I was saying, I was reading to my sister, oh, Abercrombie opened X number of stores and then their brands, Hollister opened X number of stores, Gilly Hicks opened X number of stores. And she goes, wait, did you just say Gilly Hicks open stores? <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's a new generation of girlies and I'm proud to have led the way. It's happening. This is like a real resurgence. They have a whole rebrand, Abercrombie. It's insane. You have to tell everyone what you like told TikTok about the vintage lace camis. You gave like a whole analysis, Miss Fashion School. I think we need to bring it up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah. So if anyone listening doesn't know, I did get a degree in fashion and okay. that was my professional background. I worked in the fashion industry in, in retail for six years. I worked in for corporations in New York for five years. And yeah, so I love fashion, especially as it relates to identity and self-expression and consumer behavior. Essentially, why do we dress the way we dress and how do we present ourselves? What do we want our clothes to say about us to ourselves and to other people? And so, yeah, when Abercrombie came out with the, what they called on their website, the vintage laced cami, I'm like, Everyone okay, crazy. people were bugging because they said vintage mm -hmm. guys, 20 years, give or take is it signifies the completion of a trend cycle. So if anything is over 20 years old, it's technically vintage. I'm sorry to report Tell to everybody, them. but oh. yeah, so it's vintage and I'm like, who cares? I think a lot of people are excited about the nostalgia niche um, oh. from a consumer standpoint because they are grappling with the realities of adulthood and kind of want yeah. to escape to a simpler time. But I think a lot of people get kind of offended by thinking that they're old or mm -hmm. other people on the internet calling them old and this whole discourse around being old. I'm like, yeah. first of all, do whatever you want. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, people get like so like bent out of shape over aging. And it's like, why? I think that like sort of goes back to how millennials don't like when Gen Z wear uh, yoga pants and they don't call them guacho guachos. Gauchos. Gauchos. Yeah. See, like I didn't know that. And they get, they get really genuinely mad. And I think it goes back to aging. And it's like, it doesn't have to be such a bad thing getting older. There's nothing wrong with it. Everyone gets older and it should be something that we're excited about because look at all of the fun stuff that's coming back and we all get to appreciate it together. No matter if you're a Gen Z, a millennial, boomer, whatever. Anyone can wear Abercrombie Lee's camis and Victoria's Secret yoga pants. Like, let's go. Let's get the Playboy Bunny necklaces out. Yeah, I think you know? that people had also said about just, I think TikTok really creates this kind of it's like not even discourse, but just like the kind of bickering, I guess, about, yeah. oh, is it, you know, flared leggings or yoga pants? And it's like, mm, I'm going to come in with my fashion girl hat on and be like, <laughs> okay, flared leggings oh, are, great. yeah, flared leggings, like they're fitted throughout the, you know, the thigh. Should I stand and then, up? Should I stand up? Oh my God, are you wearing them? Oh, 100%. We can't see them, but I have them perfect, on. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. I'm like yeah. five foot. I can't get into this camera frame. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm five one and three quarters. That's actually the number one thing whenever people meet me in person or see me in person they're like you're like a lot smaller than i thought you were i'm like i'm like tall personality you know how it is <laughs> wait we're literally sisters i think we're mm -hmm. actually separated at birth mm -hmm. you're literally gen z me oh my god you're me. <laughs> oh my god you're me from the future mm -hmm. oh my god right. okay i actually just saw someone had used artificial intelligence to kind of they took their old journals and diaries from when they were a kid and fed it into this like algorithm yeah. that kind of spit out because now you can use AI to write or like complete sentences or whatever yeah. depending on information you give it and so this woman was like oh I gave it information from my old journal so that it could spit out like almost like I'm having a conversation with my younger self wow. and I'm like that is so interesting. I haven't utilized technology in that kind of way. It's very smart house. Yeah. I'm like, well, also, because I, any journals that I had, I threw away or destroyed. <laughs> like, I don't keep a lot of stuff. I did think that was interesting. And I do think that 
I'm going through a bit of a physical media renaissance right now with CDs and DVDs. And I was, I was like, okay, where is this stemming from? I think it's several things. I think it's about ownership. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, when you look around and you're like, what, what is mine? And I think as a lot of millennials have different paths, not everybody takes a traditional route in the same way that boomers or gen X did. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, what do I have? That's physically mine that I can call my own. Yeah. Um, right. That looking of escapism to mm -hmm. there are so many different ways. And I think if we, the, the tagline of this conversation or this conversation, this <laughs> podcast is deep conversations about superficial things. Yeah. So of course it that. goes very deep, but on the surface too, it's just literally fun. Like I watched yeah. bring it on the other day yeah. just because I could. I love that. And sometimes with physical media, it's like if something or somebody is important to you, you want it to be tangible. So obviously, like I said, One Tree Hill and Chad Michael Murray are very important pieces in my life. So I like having a magazine with his face on it. I like having his posters. I like having the DVDs because it's something that I can hold in my hands. Whereas like HBO Max, that can be taken off in a blink of an eye. And you know, where is it? It's not physically in front of you. So the fact that it's tangible, I think is a huge, huge, huge thing for me. Yeah. I think that when physical media kind of went into obsolescence in the yeah. 2010s, it really wasn't until the pandemic and everybody was at home and watching TV where we actually realized that streaming services can be taken away at any time. Yeah. I think in the 2010s, I thought, oh, this is on Netflix now. I could get rid of it. And it's like yeah. that access is totally revocable. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, there's this idea. It's called the diffusion of innovation. And mm -hmm. it's basically like a bell curve of something's popularity. So you could take this and apply it to any fashion trend, anything that kind of comes and goes, because it's all this same cycle. So essentially you have innovators at the very beginning, a very small group of very on-trend people who try a new shoe or whatever. Then it goes into the early adopters, people who maybe they're not afraid to be like, wait, what are those shoes you're wearing? Then you start to see the early majority as the thing rises in popularity. Oh, a lot of people are wearing that shoe. Mm -hmm. Then at the very top, the middle of that bell curve is when the thing reaches the peak of its popularity. Oh, Ugg boots. Now everybody has Ugg boots. Yeah. But then as you start to go down the bell curve, once something passes the peak of its popularity, you're seeing the later majority. Mm. Oh, okay. Now everybody has Ugg boots, but it's not necessarily in a good way. You start seeing the knockoffs at TJ yeah. Maxx or whatever. And then by the end of that trend cycle, the thing falls into obsolescence and it's like mm -hmm. no one would be caught dead wearing those until the cycle starts over. Oh, wait, wait, why is Bella Hadid wearing Ugg boots? And then the cycle starts all over again. Can we just talk about your fashion degree going off right now? <laughs> that was the most well put, well spoken. Like, I feel like I'm in class right now. I'm like, yes, professor, please like tell me more. Like, I'm like invested, girl. Thanks. Your degree, you need to do something with that. You need to be like, you need to make that into a TikTok. That's I know, right? right it's so funny because I feel like I keep a lot of these things in my brain and you, you are so well-spoken and passionate about it. And I can tell Thanks. you need to share that gift. That's a gift. You need to share mm. that with people. Thank you. you this is informing my, my 2023 content strategy oh. because, you know, I think that, right. I see a lot of these TikToks and a lot of people don't necessarily have, and that's a, we could talk all day about the gripes people have yeah. with TikTok and just the like very rapid dissemination of information, whether yeah. or not it's actually coming from any kind of like reputable source. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, but I find it really interesting to look at trends this way because yeah. now it's like when something is something you like is back in fashion. It's so fun. Yeah. I, I tend to wear things I like, even when they're like, I was wearing flare jeans and 2017 when that was not like the coolest thing but I now it's like that too with juicy tracksuits yeah. mm -hmm. and it's considered to be chewy or whatever 
right <laughs> and and the and chuggy and things like that whereas i think that chuggy things slightly applied in a different way are going to be huge in like five years from oh, now 100 you're gonna see it like Okay, I think that these are some of my 2010s revival predictions. I think Michael Ooh, yeah, Kors watches. You think so? Michael Kors watches, I think, are going to come back um, kind of in a similar way that like Tiffany's bracelets yeah. and necklaces have. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's going to be some kind of boot that is an updated version of, remember the the knee-high leather two-tone riding boots? Yeah. I think we're going to see some kind of twist on that. Um, wow. I've even seen, yeah, I've even I'm seen with like, those. yeah, like, I've even seen with like, like Corey Birch boots or something. Right? I was going to say, um, Tory Birch, um, what were they called? Like a wrap bracelet. They had these leather yeah. wrap bracelets, mm-hmm. um, which I loved. And just the idea of in the 2010s, it was called an arm party. But there's going to be something else that comes out in five years that basically means the same thing. It's going to be like a bunch of jewelry, whether it's necklace stacking, whether it's different ring stacking. Like in the 2010s, we saw, I forget what they're called, like the knuckle rings where it would have like um, multiple fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, something. Yeah. I had them in Degrassi and they would like punch someone with it. <laughs> watch Degrassi? Like brass knuckles. Yes, I <laughs> yeah. absolutely loved it. Um, I would say, and then a few more things. I think like peplum like top. Long... Peplum tops, yes. Oh, that's coming back. Mm-hmm. I like those. Those are flattering. Those were fun. And I think too, it will be in a new way because I talk wow. about the 2000s had kind of like the business casual trend i have no i think it was because they were prepping millennials to be like little corporate workers for the rest of their lives hence why we were dressing like secretaries when we were 12 years old but um (laughs) if you look at all of that so raven's clothes when she's not wearing like the fuzzy and feathered feather boa right when she's not wearing a marabou feather boa she is wearing pinstripe pants a small vest, a white collared shirt. It, once you start to watch it, notice it. It's so funny because we were like, we were going to school looking like this. It's so weird. That's like the hills. Like Lauren Conrad would go to the club in like a blazer. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I once wore a <laughs> to a club. This this is probably 2011 or so. A black blazer. Oh, I bet you pink, killed it too. Yeah. A, oh, thank you. A pink cami and a black headband with a little bow on the top and I curl my hair. Hell? Oh my God. <laughs> like with dark wash denim, like skinny jeans with black stiletto heels. You need to get a picture of this and like put it on the screen. Oh, we need to find this picture. I definitely have it. Oh, you need to find it. I definitely it. have it. I'll find it. <laughs> there were some outfits. I did an episode a while back called two, Realistic 2000s Outfits, mm-hmm. and I included a lot of pictures of my own. And now that I have found my old hard drive from my 2009 computer with my 2010s outfits, I oh. think it might be time to do a 2010s version. You need to make that into a TikTok because I needed some inspiration for my 2009 <laughs> era. I'm getting the LG Shine phone. I have to see what you were wearing. You're my idol. You're me. You're me in the future. I, I just want to copy you. Thank you. I feel like there is a big difference. What do you feel like is the biggest difference between the... Because for me, it's very stark but i think that might have also just been because of my age like a clean break between elementary school and middle school in the early 2000s versus high school and college in the late 2000s do you feel like whether it's in style or what that there is a little bit of difference between those two parts of the same decade i mean for me i would say what really separated the decades is technology because i remember I mean, I was way too young to have a flip phone, but I did have a flip phone. And I remember going into middle school with an iPhone. And when my brothers hear that, they're like, we didn't even have phones until high school and or even college, I think. And she had an iPhone in sixth grade. It's crazy. So 
that is a huge stark contrast that's how i sort of separate the decades but for fashion everything just everything just blended in for me because i was just wearing whatever my parents wanted me to wear even though in the back of my mind i wanted those juicy tracksuits and i got those juicy tracksuits when i was old enough too <laughs> yeah i think you can almost apply kind of like a trend to cell phones too where oh. it's like the the more advanced the cell phones got, the younger people were when they got them. And it's yeah. almost like you could gauge somebody's age based on what kind of cell phone they had and yeah. when. Because if someone says, oh, I got a cell phone when I was, you know, in ninth grade mm -hmm. and it was a like before flip phones I'm like oh okay you're like in your mid to late 30s or mm -hmm. oh my first phone was a flip phone in 10th grade oh mm -hmm. okay so it it's kind of like you can gauge based on because at that time even though it was only one decade mm -hmm. you're right there was so much I guess innovation packed into a short really amount of time fast. very 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 fast and things fell in and out of trend so fast too and I feel like that's Going back to what we said earlier, I did miss out on a lot of it because it moved so fast. Mm. Right? Do you do you remember time in your life without technology? Honestly, um, no. I remember being very young and uh, playing webkins and mm -hmm. Club Penguin, and my parents always tease me because they're like, "It makes so much sense that you're doing social media now." as like a career or profession because I was like six years old playing Webkins and Club Penguin all day. It just sort of naturally evolved. And plus I have, um, I've always been very anxious. So I always, always, always was online and I always just loved watching creators on YouTube. And that's really what I wanted to be. So I guess I sort of became that in my own way through TikTok and stuff like that. So that is really crazy thinking about it. I've never, I can't think of a time I didn't have technology. That's cool. I think about weird, how isn't it? it's weird. I think about how it has evolved and even like, you know, my argument now, whereas we look to new ways of technology in the future, even post social media, for me, it's like we didn't get on. I had Zanga, which was like a blogging website, maybe in like 2003 to 2005 or so. And then about 2005 to 2007 or eight, maybe it was MySpace. And it's like, oh, so I didn't, I didn't get on Zanga so that I could publish my thoughts on, on the internet. And yeah. also the internet was very much like before social media was very much like you put something out there and it was like, yeah. Okay, whatever. But I did it so that I could write a little blog entry to my friend and we would mm -hmm. talk about our days and stuff like it was kind of like a a journal that your friends could comment on or be a part of. And mm -hmm. I didn't have my space so that I could code my whole and do HTML on my whole website, but I code my own website now. I did that mm -hmm. so that I could talk to my friends and, and I really think technology is going to continue to evolve because it enables these experiences for people to connect with one another. That's what I think is important. Now, can I ask you a question? Does it scare you at all about technology evolving? Because I, I look at how fast things are moving even today with technology and all I can think about is the movie Smart House from Disney Channel in 1999. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching that and thinking it was a horror movie. And that's what our world looks like now. The house isn't coming alive, but we have the technology that was seen in that movie. So do you, do you get scared a little bit going moving forward? Because I get a little scared thinking like, like what are we going to have in five years if we have all of this stuff now? Everything's just going to keep evolving, 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 you know? Yeah, I read in a book once that said that we always think that we are at like the brink. We always yeah. think we're as far as we're ever going to get yeah. in terms of technology, but we never are. Mm -hmm. Thing We can't predict the future and things are always going to take a different turn than we think that they are. And yeah. so if you said to somebody in the 90s, one day, pretty soon, everybody is going to have a computer in their pocket. And you're talking to someone who 
bear, who probably doesn't even have dial up internet yet, yeah. they'd be like, what's well, a computer? Oh <laughs> you my know, God, that's so true. Yeah. So I think that if you ask someone now, what is it going to be like in five years? I do think that, you know, like I was saying with the AI and the, mm -hmm. um, I think that there's going to be ways to just be more creative with technology. Yeah. I think that people are going to in the, I'm very interested in the kind of decentralized creator economy where yeah. you're not relying on Instagram and YouTube to give you a paycheck. Mm -hmm. You get to put your own information out there and your own content and be able to not work in a silo the way that creators do now. Mm -hmm. My friend Brian, who we had on the podcast said, algorithms don't get tired. I do. Yeah. And I think that's a really good quote. I think that content creators are going to find more creative ways to collaborate so that they're not burned out yeah. or even kind of like a studio or agency model where someone, you know, instead of Instagram getting a cut of what you make, it's your editor, it's your yeah. producer. And, you know, you almost create these little they're called meta labels. So mm -hmm. kind of like a group of creators who all come together to build something. Maybe you're the face of it, okay. but you don't have to do everything by yourself the way that you do now. So I think those little groups uh, where people are truly collaborating are going mm -hmm. to emerge. And then a, probably a million other things that I can't even think of, but I'm excited because I like technology. And I think yeah. also the more you're in it I'm like a very online person I think the Same. more you're in it you there tends to be a kind of like a splinter so it could go two ways people who are very online either can be like very mentally unwell because of it um, because they internalize what they see they take mm. things personally they make assumptions they tie their self-worth to whatever kind of metrics um, or they just get too sucked into a platform and, and it's outsized importance on their life. Yeah. Whereas I've, I'm the latter now, I think mm -hmm. thinking about so much of the future made me disconnect from the importance of Instagram and kind of what's still seen in the present as like important like on that. social media. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, I'd honestly rather just shut off my phone go take a walk outside, hang out with my friends. And maybe I'll like go buy a disposable camera and just keep the pictures for myself. You yes, know, I love that. And I'm so, I love what you said about them evolving. What's next for creators? Because mm -hmm. I do feel like even though it's less stigmatized now to be a creator, it's still looked down on a little bit by people. And I don't think people realize how important creators are. Because mm -hmm. even if it is just a TikTok or a YouTube video or an Instagram post, it's like you're providing a safe space for a community of people to escape from what's going on in their day. I get so many messages from people telling me that like my post brought them out of a really dark day that they were having or they were crying and they saw a TikTok and it brought a smile to their face. And that's an art form and that's a really important thing, especially in the world that we are in today. We need that space where people are happy and it's just like a light, fun area. And I think moving forward, we need to find a way to support creators and fun creators because we can't live in a world without them. Mm -hmm. We can't, it's, it's like watching your favorite TV show or watching your favorite movie. It brings you comfort. It brings you light. And I have my own favorite creators that do that for me. And the fact that we are probably that for someone else. Mm -hmm. is massive and even though we are in the space it doesn't mean that we can't go get flip phones we can go get flip phones <laughs> take a couple of days off because we need our time too but yeah i love what you said about that i'm really looking forward to that maybe we can create something for creators how fun would mm -hmm. that be yeah oh it God. really would be i'm what? excited oh yeah, me too <laughs> thank you so so much for coming on the show i had a blast with you Nicole, I had the best time with you. We're literally going to be best friends. I'm going to send you a Cinderella story CD. We're going to go get pumpkin. Do you like pumpkin spice lattes? Yeah. We're going to go get lattes in Connecticut. I'm going to take mm. you to the um, the Gilmore Girls town in Connecticut. Have you been to New Milford? Okay. I have been to New Milford. I have not. The Gilmore Girls is the other show I haven't seen. <laughs> oh, no. 
okay. Now we're gonna have a watch list for you. Mm-hmm. You're gonna watch Gilmore Girls. You're gonna watch One Tree Hill. You watched Friday Night Lights, but you didn't watch One Tree Hill. No, Girls. I didn't watch Friday Night Lights either. <laughs> oh no, you're watching Gilmore Girls because you're in Connecticut. New mm-hmm. Milford is like the physical embodiment of Gilmore Girls. Yeah, go Milo Ventimiglia is my celebrity crush, and you so... haven't watched Gilmore Girls, right? So he came in. He was a This Is Us coming into my life and oh. now I'm like good thing I haven't known about him for the last 20 years because I would have lost a lot of time <laughs> thinking about him my friend who reminds me of you you guys just are the same person she loves Milo Ventimiglia and mm-hmm. at her house this is so funny and I hope she doesn't hate me for saying this she has <laughs> she has a Milo Ventimiglia shower curtain <laughs> it's his face on a shower curtain massive massive and you know when like when somebody comes over to like work on her house like an electrician or a plumber she has to take it down because mm-hmm. they, they think it's like her boyfriend because <laughs> of a picture it's so funny i have to show you a picture it's so 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 funny she's take gonna a picture and send it to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny you need it <laughs> that's amazing right okay cool tell yeah. the people where they can find you um i'm everywhere literally everywhere i'm on tiktok i'm on youtube i'm on instagram and i go by miss 2005 with three s's the reason it's not two s's is because there's another miss 2005 she took it first so Mm. miss 2005 with three s's and i believe on youtube it's nicole randone perfect yeah awesome thank you again so so much for being here thank you so much for having me i had the best time ever i am a huge fan of yours so this was just an honor thank Seriously. you i had so much fun thanks and thank you everyone for listening we will see you next time bye that's a wrap for this week if you like nostalgia please connect with me on social subscribe to the nostalgia newsletter at nostalgia.substack.com and follow rate review on your platform of choice. Everything's linked in the show notes, including where to find more about our guest of the week. Thank you so, so much for your support. And that was this week's episode of Nostalgia. 